You're listening to the Jewel City Podcast. We gather together Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with something for all people and all ages. Or you can join our live stream at 10 a.m. To find out more about what's going on here at Jewel City Church, visit jccwv.org slash events. In this podcast, we're going to hear a message from our congressional care pastor, Aaron Cate. I want to talk a little bit about David bringing the Ark of God back to Jerusalem tonight. The title is, Is He Enthroned on Your Heart? You know, I know Sunday night we're all Christians, believers, but is he truly enthroned upon our heart? You know, there's a little history first with David. The Ark of the Covenant, it signifies God's power. It signifies his presence with Israel. It signifies his authority. The Ark of the Covenant is a chest which contained the law of God, the Ten Commandments, the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and above it was, was the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat where the Lord of hosts dwells. First Samuel 4 and 5, And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted, so loudly the earth shook. Can you shout that loud tonight? Can you shout so loud that the earth shook? Can you imagine that? Brothers and sisters in Christ shouting so loud that the nation shakes. One day we'll be there, right? One day. The craziness about all that, they're shouting, but they just lost to the Philistines in battle. It's crazy. They're still rejoicing. Why? Because the Ark of the Covenant is still in the middle of their land and in the middle of their heart. That's the peace. That's the security of knowing the Lord God Almighty. No matter the battle, if we know the Lord we can still have joy. You might not feel like it. Even this morning, even this evening, it, the first couple of songs, it, it didn't feel like we wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. But Pastor Kerry said, just step in, go forth. Sometimes we got to continue to praise until we push through that first line of defense that's coming against us. That's saying, I don't want you to praise tonight. I don't want you to get your glory on. I don't want you to worship me. That's the lie from the adversary. Get your shout on and it'll shake the land. It'll shake the world. It'll shake you inside. It may even wake you up a little bit. Amen. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We learn in Nehemiah 8 and 10. Listen, the the Philistines, they can't stand the Israel's joy. The devil can't stand your joy. That's why Jesus warns us that he come to steal, kill and, and destroy that. So they battle against the Israelites again and they steal the ark of God and we're in a battle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of darkness amen the Philistines they take that ark of the covenant they take the ark of God and they stick it in their house of the God the God of Dagon and Dagon is next to the ark and what happens to Dagon the first night Dagon falls over before our God and they come back and they stand him up and what happens the second day? They go back in the morning and the, the God, the Dagon, is falling completely. This time it's even worse than before. His head is gone. The palms of his hands is gone. Why? Because the adversary can't stand in the presence of the Lord. So when we get our praise on, when we get a glory on, because of the Ark of the Covenant, Lord God Almighty, Jesus himself, is enthroned upon our heart. The adversary can't stand against us. Amen? There's only one true God. And it's Jehovah. The Israel, the Philistines want to get rid of the ark. Listen, when you get your praise on and you get your joy on, the adversary doesn't want to stand next to you. When you flee from evil, right? When you get away from it, the glory of the Lord. First Samuel 7 and 1, Then the men of kirjoth Jerem came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. Then the ark rested, rested at Anabin, I, I say it again, at Ben Adab's house for 20 years. The Israelites only cried out to God when they were in trouble. King Saul's disobedience, he wasn't, he wasn't bothered with where the ark of the covenant was. Is God enthroned upon your heart? 
because if he is our disobedience, it should bother us. But the new king, King David, he would like to take the ark of God to the new city of Jerusalem. And David understands the power of the ark of God. He understands the value it means and what it represents to the Israelites. It would also validate his kingship, proving that God was indeed with him. That's what Jesus has done for you. He's made you a child of the most high God. He has validated your relationship with God. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. He sees the blood of the lamb that is covering you. In 2 Samuel 6, 1 through 15, we read the scriptures of David bringing it back. And David wants to bring the Ark of the Covenant back. But he does it the wrong way. He takes the ark and he puts it on a wagon pulled by oxen. God doesn't want anything else to pull for us. God wants us to carry the ark. There's a specific way to carry the ark, but they, they saddled up on a, on a wagon and they get to a threshing hole where, where the ark starts to fall. And one of his men, Uzzah, grabs a hold of it to steady it, not knowing that he was out of line with God. And God smoked him, burned him up right there. And it displeased David greatly. But David, he went back and he researched the law of Moses. He went back and he researched and he found out that only the priest could carry the Ark of the Covenant. And this time he brought the priests and he brought, he brought the musicians. He brought the worshipers. It says from, from where they were to Judah, all the way to Jerusalem. It was lined up. And it says that David went one, two, three, four, five, six paces. And he would make sacrifice unto the Lord. And then he would dance before God. He would dance before God. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he would slaughter an animal and make sacrifice. And he would dance before the Lord. He would get undignified however he did it. He would dance before the Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six. The sacrifice of praise meant so much to David because it means so much to God. Whenever he's enthroned upon our heart, no matter the trouble that we're going through, no matter what we're facing in our day, if we'll get our heart focused on him in a song of praise, I'm telling you, your joy will come alive inside of you. They make fun of me because I sing the halls all day long. I walk through and they can say, Pastor Aaron's here today. I might not be able to carry the tune. I might not be able to be up there and sing with a microphone, but it's the joy that I sing unto the Lord. It's the praise that I give to him because he gave me a voice of triumph because he brought me out of the miry clay. He brought the Ark of the Covenant back. He showed David he was in sin. He said, you're in sin, you're doing it wrong. But David learned the right way by studying the word. And then he brought the praise back to the Father. Amen. Psalms 22 and 3, it reads, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of Israel. God inhabits your praise. He inhabits my praise. Think about that. When you're going through a troubled situation, if you can just get through, if you can press through that burden line that's stopping you, if you can press through that fear, if you can press through the doubt, and just get your praise on. He inhabits your presence. It doesn't have to be just here on Sunday morning. It doesn't have to be just here. I worship at home. Sometimes I feel, sometimes whenever I'm here and I'm just, I'm just lifting my hands and I'm swaying back and forth. I want a spirit of Scotty up on me. I want a spirit of Carrie up on me where I can bounce. 
where I could just shift my weight and move around freely in the presence of the Lord. I can do it at my house. I can do it at my house with no problem. But I get locked down. God just wants to see our hearts. He just wants to know your love for Him. It doesn't matter who's standing next to us. It doesn't matter what they think about us. Sometimes I'm afraid I'm going to smack somebody. But I just want to open up more. And I want to encourage you to open up more. You might just be like the priest and you only stand there holding the ark. Maybe that's just your first step. Maybe you should start swaying. It tells me that the ark set in the home of Obed-Edom. And maybe that's all you want to do is just sit there and praise the Lord. It doesn't matter. Obed-Edom's house prospered while the ark was there. But maybe, just maybe, you want to get a little David inside of you and get it undignified. Maybe you want to run like Scotty. The first time the Maynards came here, Scotty broke a cross here running. And I thought, man, they are never coming back. But the Spirit hit him and he moved. And when the Spirit hits us, we need to be obedient and we need to move. Why? Because he inhabits our praise. Why do we praise? Because Psalms 27 and 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I have nothing to be afraid of because the God of the universe, the God who created it, Elohim, Lord El Shaddai, who's all sufficient, all knowing, El Ra, the God who sees all, is already in my day. He's already into my tomorrow. And the next day, if he gives me breath, he's already there. That's why I praise. Psalms 24 and 8. Who is this king of glory? This is why we don't worry about fighting our own battles. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Man, if we get our praise on, if we get our joy on, because he inhabits the praise. Our fight starts getting different because our fight is not about us. Our fight becomes his fight because all we're doing is saying, I'm handing it over to you in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. Everything that's going on in my house, I'm just going to praise you. And I'm just going to ask you to take it all right now from me because it's your battle. That's what the word says. We got to speak it and believe it that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we think or ask. Why do we praise? Psalms 150 verses one and two. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his handiwork is what it's saying. When you look at the stars at night, whenever you walk outside and you look up and you say, I praise you, Lord God, for you name them. You know each and every one of them. You place them specifically to make the designs. And I stand here in awe of what you do. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Has God ever been great to anybody? Praise him for his excellent great, greatness. Listen, whenever you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, thank him for that face that you're looking at because your greatness, your greatness that he created your greatness. Whenever you look at that face, you say, I have greatness because of my God. Encourage yourself. Strengthen yourself. Psalms 130, 135, 1 through 3. Praise you, the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of his house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name for it is pleasant. Sing praises unto his name. I encourage you to learn the names of God and start crying out. Jehovah Jireh, I praise you because you're my provider. Jehovah Rapha, I praise you because you are my healer. Jehovah Ra, I praise you because you're my shepherd and I shall not want. And learn the names and praise him for him. 
Hallelujah. You're Jehovah Sikhnu. You're the Lord, my righteousness. And I praise you for it. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We praise the Lord because of his greatness, because of his heart for us, that he gave Jesus Christ his one and only so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, but have eternal life in heaven with him. Psalms 118 and 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. I'd encourage you to stand to your feet tonight. This altar still open. Is there anyone here that would say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Is there anyone here that needs to know Jesus? I'd encourage you to raise a hand. I'll sing a song of praise for you stepping into glory. I'll shout. Is there anyone here that needs Jesus? I'd encourage you to stand and worship with us. He is great and his mercy endures forever. Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. We gather together Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with something for all people and all ages. Or you can join our live stream at 10 a.m. To find out more about what's going on here at Jewel City Church, visit jccwv.org events. 